culture. Yes. That's the way to get it started. I know. Woo, Look at this beautiful room. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. I started my career in 1985. If we had tried to do a conference of employed black creatives behind the scenes, there would have been three people. <laughs> we have arrived. <laughs> Yay. Not Beautiful. That, but I don't know if you ladies noticed, but there was Vaseline Cocoa Radiant Lotion in the green room. That is equity and inclusion. <laughs> so let's get right into this conversation about our fabulous season two. But before that, I want to talk about your careers. You have iconic careers, both of you. We know you from Soul Food and so many other things. We know you from The Morning Show. Uh, it must be said that Nicole was nominated for seven Image Awards. That's a lot of dignity. You are a SAG Award nominee for the, for the morning show. But now you're doing this. But before that, when did you know that you wanted to become actors and how did you get into your careers? Uh, well, um, I was one of those kids that kind of came out the womb being dramatic. Um, but I used to write I used to, I grew up with like Good Times and the Jeffersons and the our iconic shows and um, I used to watch them and rewrite some of the scenes or add a character or I wanted to be Bernadette Stannis' friend or I wanted, you know, Walona to be my aunt. <laughs> so I was really um, always an actor and storyteller and creative. And um, I, got, I, I, I graduated early from high school and I got into NYU. The Tisch School of the, the Arts. Tisch School of the Arts, yes. And I actually got in as a journalism major and because I didn't want my parents to, to pay that tuition without a real degree. Okay. But I was so moved by New York City and moved by the program that I asked my father if I could audition for Tish and I went second semester and, and then the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. Okay, we love it. What about you, Karen? Um, I also was a dramatic child, like super sensitive. Um, but I, I don't think I really decided to be an actor, like commit to storytelling and acting until really... Uh, 2012, 2013, really, and by that time I had gone to school for acting, um, but I had, um, I was a single mother, and at that point I really needed to decide whether or not I was going to commit to acting or find another way to make money for my children, for my life, um, and at that point I decided that I was really going to commit to it and it just changed my perspective, it changed my intention, changed my purpose for doing the work that I did. So that was really when I, I committed and things just turned around almost immediately. Because you committed to your real path. I committed path. to my real path. Yeah. Exactly, so you mentioned the good times, Jeffersons, et cetera. When was the first time you really felt like you saw yourself represented on screen, on television or in film? Well, I mean, I think it, it was a variety of shows. I think um, it was that age where, um, remember the CW? Y'all remember CW? We remember Back the when CW. 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 And there was Moesha, and there was, what's the other shows that we were watching at the time? UPN. Martin. UPN. 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 It was we UPN. used to it call it the w Underpaid Negro Network. The Underpaid Negro Network. And um, UPW. You know, <laughs> Boris and I, I think, had the last UPN show. What was that show? Second time around. Aww. Yeah, it was like a little show. Cute. Hey, all right. It, this is a black television history moment. Right, 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 yeah. right. right. <laughs> but, it, but it was a variety of shows that I saw um, that really just moved me. And I thought, yeah, this is, this is something I can do. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are uh, performing, what is it that inspires you to work on your craft? How do you continue to hone your craft? You want to take that one? Well, I, I would say I just want, you know, just like us in real life, I would want to look for whether or not the character starts somewhere, goes through something, and then ends up stronger somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, I like an arc. I like a little drama, a little comedy. Kind of what we have on, a, on the show, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would also say... Um, 
a good storyteller who's ahead of the show, like Miss Susan <laughs> Fails Hill <laughs> on and just like that. Great, great actors, colleagues to work with, like Miss Nicole Laria Parker. Um, but also something that is um, elemental to me is that there's a kind of activism, there's a commentary, like we're doing something with the story we're telling. That really attracts me to any um, opportunity that, I, mm -hmm. that I'm well, presented with. Well, Bell Hooks has said that uh, the fight for equality is also a fight for images. Absolutely. And there's certainly been, what evolution have you seen in your careers in the images that are out there and that you're now offered to play? Well, I think piggybacking, piggybacking off of what Karen said is that the way those images are stronger, realer, and more visible is for people like the writers and the producers uh, in the room that look like the characters they're creating. I think that's just number one. And Michael Patrick King was smart enough to know this and put you in that position to, to, to further blossom these characters. Um, so I just think we need to be in all parts of the process mm -hmm. to curate you know, the right stories, the right characters, the depth of the character, and to know we're not one dimensional. And I also think progress means, again, a variety of stories so that we can see uh, this story. We can go um, on own and see a different story. We can go right. on the Apple TV and see it. I mean, we see a, a multitude of stories where for a very long time in American television, we only saw one kind of story. It insisted that as creatives, we um, elevate representation in a way that wasn't always accurate, wasn't always authentic. Well, there were archetypes that we were That's reduced right. to. That's right. And also, we got very impassioned about each image because it was the one that was out there. That's right. So you're playing two very different characters simultaneously on two shows. Yeah. How do you manage that as an actor? Karen just took all the jobs. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ton of jobs out there. Uh, <laughs> um, I navigated by uh, lifting my voice, by saying what it is that I want. And as a black woman, that's very hard in this industry. Sometimes it sounds like a whisper, and sometimes it looks like <laughs> that. And, and sometimes, you know, it is a full-throated, well-thought-out, you know, opinion. Uh, but it's important for me to speak up, not just for myself, but I speak up for other people on the show, like Nicole or Sarita. The more of us that uh, open up our mouths and say, this is what's important to us, um, means that those people who are empowered to make decisions are inclusive because um, diversity is not equity. Inclusivity is not equity. Equity is equity. And what we need in our industry is more of that. Equal pay, equal storytelling, equal decision making. We need to um, elevate that in American television. It's, it's not gonna be a good good television unless it is, includes all of us, right? No, absolutely. And in this season, and in this season, last season as well, we are really at the table. Yes. In a, in a full and equal manner. For sure. So that's huge progress. Um, tell us a little bit about how you see your characters having evolved from last season. And before we get to that, I have to acknowledge uh, a few of the people who were involved last season because you really set the table last season and built the foundation for what we're doing now. And in, with black artists, it's always a relay race. One person starts it and another person takes it to the next level. So I want to acknowledge Kelly Goff, who was one of amazing. our brilliant writers Kelly last year who wrote the fourth episode that was amazing. So what, what do you see as the evolution of your character this year? Without any spoilers. Uh, she's having more sex. <laughs> in the city. <laughs> but I, I think that Kelly did an amazing job laying the foundation for, for our characters especially um, because it was a lot. That show is 25 years old. This is the 25th anniversary. Let's give it up for Sarah Jessica Parker. Yes. Davis, and Cynthia Nixon and Kim Cattrall. And so we're, we were joining, you know, a party that we had not been invited to for 25 years, and it was a lot. It was a lot of pressure from everyone watching. Instagram, Twitter, it was overwhelming. 
Uh, most of my interviews were just about being the black girl on the show, and I was like, well, you know there's black girls in New York City. So. <laughs> I mean, and I was just really overwhelmed by how people weren't going, weren't used to it. And now yeah. it's relaxed and marinated and we're actually real people now on the show, you know? No. Yeah. yeah. I think you're also, um, what I think is great is you're going to see uh, black women in a joyful space, you know, laughing, having a good time, sexy, passionate, loving, um, in, in, dressed uh, to the gods. Dressed to the gods. <laughs> <laughs> With the looks. But um, what a joy it is to walk on set, um, walk past Susan Fales Hill, and then sit across from Nicole Ari Parker and do a scene with her. I mean, it's a, where we're joyful and we're happy and we are um, expressing these characters so in an authentic way. I say this to you ladies all the time on set, but it's really true. I grew up around the great black actresses, Diane Carroll, yes. Eartha Kitt, Cicely Tyson, yes. et cetera. And Her mother. Uh, it is revolutionary to be able to be intelligent, glamorous, and black on screen all at the same time. That didn't used to happen. Uh, so, and in fact, once Diane was up for a role and her agent said, well, they want footage of you where you are glamorous and dramatic. And she said, you tell them that part hasn't been written for a black woman yet. You know, mercifully in this century it has. And this is to me a real culmination. And we stand on her shoulders for real. So you absolutely do. So um, shall we give them a little taste of what we've been up to? A little taste. Are you ready? Just for, for a sneak peek. <laughs> so I'm just gonna set this up quickly, this clip. That word was for the technical people. The clip is coming. So LTW, in addition to being a wife, mother, art collector, fashionista, is a documentary filmmaker. And she's doing a film on Constance Baker Motley who, for those of you who don't know, was the first black female federal judge. She's the OG. She argued Brown v. Board of Education. If you watch the Katanji Brown-Jackson hearings, she name-checked her about 20 times. And she's interviewing brilliant Dr. Naya Wallace, who is, as we know, a law professor. And uh, the discussion begins on an elevated level, and then, well, we'll see where it goes. So let's go to the clip, if we can. And uh, that's how I became a professor at Columbia Law School. Really great, Naya. Really? Yes. <laughs> now I want to double back and get some more of your feelings about Constance Baker Motley. Well, I mean, how did one woman break all those race and gender barriers? Mm -hmm. uh, she, she was a... Uh, hmm? I think my mic slipped down. Oh, Brian. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get okay. that for you. It's fine. Um... Part of my reach, I just gotta. Oh yeah, sure, corporate. of course, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Should you buy me dinner first? <laughs> you know what? I I really think we got it, and we're running over, so I think we can just wrap it up. Copy, if you mind. Oh, okay. Let me just get it right there. Um, were you serious about that dinner? What? Oh, no, I was just joking. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> hey. Can I talk to you about your sound guy? Brian? Oh, he's fine, right? That was all a little bit extra, am I right? Well, let's just say he didn't go mic fishing on the circuit court judge I interviewed yesterday. Okay, well, my husband and I just separated, so my mind isn't working that way yet. Um, but did you see his arms in that shirt? I think your mind is working that way, so why don't you give him your number and make it quick because we are late for lunch. That's a wrap, everybody. I'll see you Thursday. <laughs> Look cute. That we was shot cute. that so long ago. I know. That really, really, really came out well. Okay, so true story. Every time you did the, the mic drop thing, I thought, why aren't we cutting? Something is there, we have a technical problem. You did it so convincingly that I literally thought you had lost your mic. We were like, Susan, she's acting. She's <laughs> acting, it's called acting. And that is just one of a bevy of beautiful brown men who will be trooping through the season. So, are we ready? Awesome. Do you have a favorite moment that we had on the set this season.
Uh, do you, you all know Christopher Jackson from Hamilton? Do you know who that is? Yes, he played George Bull, Washington. the season. And Bull. Bull, yeah, but he plays my husband on the show. And uh, we, have, we have some fun times on the show, so tune in to see him if you're a fan. Yeah, he's beautiful, and you're beautiful together. Oh, so, so my favorite couple. Um, uh, there is a scene that's sort of a throwback to the Sex in the City days um, with Sarita Chowdhury, who plays Seema Patel, and Sarah Jessica Parker, who plays Carrie Bradshaw, and we're at a bar and we're looking for men, and we're drinking <laughs> Cosmos. And I loved that scene. I loved filming it with those ladies, and we had such a great time behind the scenes just chatting and, and yeah, just having fun. Yep. And you'll meet my father this season, but I'm not at liberty to discuss, but he's one of... He's an icon, icon. with a capital of I, Everybody I, in this I, room, I. when you see it, you will be like, oh my God. There's so many surprises that are happening this season that I think um, the audience of color are really going to appreciate. They're really going to appreciate well, how we have... Part of the have... reason it was a hit was a large part of it. Yeah. Their audience yeah. were African-American women in their 20s. I mean, yeah. we all watched the show, so... Yeah. Well, there's so many, exactly. Yeah. How, how many are fans of the original? Okay, yeah. so... But now, we haven't just been invited to the party, we've been invited to the dance floor. We That's are right. here at the center of it. But we're going to, we have to wrap it up, but we want some words of wisdom from you. So, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned in the course of your careers? What would you, that you wish you knew when you were starting out or when you were younger? Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to be quick. I think one of the things that I wish that I knew is how important it is to say yes. To say yes to the things that you think, oh, well, is that worth my time? Am I going to get enough money? Is it... Just say yes to as many opportunities as you can to develop yourself, to develop your business mindset, and develop your craft. Say yes. That's a good one. And, and say yes to the sound man with the beautiful arms. Say yes to him. <laughs> Seriously. I would just say that, um, you know, this game of acting is, it's show business. It's not always show art. And, but your artist's heart is going to take a beating. Um, and there's probably no way around that, except you will get stronger if you start to create and write down the characters you're chasing to play. You have to keep that artist in you alive and strengthened in that if you want to play Juliet in the all black Romeo and Juliet, you know, you flesh that out on paper and really get a strong hold on your passion and your dreams. So you own it. So when you walk into those rooms, either you'll get the part or you won't. But the second thing is you'll maybe do it yourself. You'll get the courage and you'll find the friend and you'll find the cinematographer and you'll find the lighting person and you'll make it happen yourself. Don't esti underestimate what you can do. No, that's beautiful. Okay, final, final question. This is one of the hardest businesses. It is triply hard for women of color, even though we have more opportunities than there were before. What keeps you both sane? Yeah. Well, my kids keep, it, keep me kids, real. I was gonna say <laughs> um, what keeps me sane is God. For sure, my prayer life, my meditation life, we, I'm just gonna say it, it's the truth. It's never, I, uh, yes. Um, I think trying to stay grounded is uh, family and friends, certainly good relationships. And uh, yeah, I just, God, friends, all, all that. Love. Love, love keeps me. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I want to thank both of you for the most magnificent experience ever. It's been a, it's such a joy working with you. Thank you, Susan. It's such an honor. Yes. It's such a pleasure. Please tune in. June 22nd, it drops. Make, get some Cosmos and make it a watch party.